Welcome to 1407 Gray Malkin Lane. This is the living memory of the X-Men. Don't let anyone tell you different. Okay. I'm with my friend, Gary Zorban Zorbanak. Am I saying that correctly? Yeah, that's, that's not to Gary my, Z. My, Gary that's Z. My, that's my <laughs> Golden Girl's name. I am <laughs> Jones. Yeah. Hey, hey, Sophia is, oh man. Like the way she just cracked on all three of them in the same. Oh, it was great. Um, What's up, buddy? Okay, so we, okay, so Jordan White has annoyed us a lot over the years with his, oh, yeah, with his pussy footing around with the X Men. He doesn't really, he's not really an X Men fan. Wait, wait, wait. So, who, who do you think is more annoying? CB Sabowski? who um, masqueraded as a Japanese person for like 10 years eh. or Jordan White. Jordan White. At least, yeah, at least, gonna... at least CB, at least his stuff was good. Yeah, I mean, it, it's the mustache for me. Hey, that really not... pushes me over the edge. No, it's just it, like, he doesn't under, like, he's mm. he's so white with it, with his answers. He's like, mm-hmm. oh, the extinction era. I thought it was a little overbearing because they were too self-concerning. Um, weren't they supposed to? Uh, I mean, I think that the biggest issue is I think that it's being mandated that the X-Men have to start getting back to the Marvel Universe and having them on Krakoa is just kind of pushing them further away from their goal, which is why they keep pushing them into events that they don't need to be a part of in any way, shape, or form. Oh, okay. All right. So before before we jump, okay. Jordan White came out with an article at AIPT. Shout out. Of course. Yeah. Um, Question and answer yeah, garbage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it's a, uh, where he's basically talking about. Um, the Scott and Gene thing, he's like, oh yeah, it's really, it's really getting really heated and debated. And like, you're not really saying anything. He never does. And and then he's like, but before why is he even like why is he even the head of the X-Men? I don't know. Editorial staff. He has no love for them. He's an evil little gnome. I'm telling you, he's an evil little gnome. Yeah, I've no. always thought, like, I always imagined if I ever became head of X, I'm coming in with a paintball gun and I'm firing Teeny, Vita, uh, Leah, Cy, Cy Spurrier, he's he's out too. And Ben Percy, I would have I would have him like Oh, see, I, 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 Percy would be the first on my list. Really, I, Percy? Oh, yeah, God. he's not like he keeps. Everybody keeps saying he's writing for the long run. Well, it's been four years. How much exactly. longer? Like, and it's not like he's not Claremonting where he's dropping like hints or something like that. Yeah. Like it'll be a cliffhanger, and then it won't be touched upon for twenty issues. So, Max. no, I, like. And also, like, oh, and Teeny, Teeny needs to go. Like, I'm sorry, oh, I'm all for yeah. T- as a as a loud and proud homosexual. Yeah, I I I I, I need her gone. I need her. Uh, she... Okay, as a straight man, I'm mm-hmm. saying Teeny, what she's done with Psylocke has just reinforced a lot of stereotypes that I've heard over the growing up. You mean Locked. oh wait, you mean you mean Betsy because Psylocke yeah. now Oh no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I still call her Psylocke. I, I, yeah. for, for Jordan White's plan of continuously keeping her in the coochie cutters, um every all of Betsy's personality has been transferred into um Cannon's body, which sucks because I feel like Cannon could be such a good character. And Wells did so much with her in that 18 issue. Oh yeah, um, Hell- no, um, Hellions, yeah, yeah. And then uh, Zero Lando, he did a little bit, but not as much. Like she was part of a teen book. It was there was no really 
there was Orlando like, Orlando needs to go to. Like he needs to go. You know, I, no, bucks. He needs a better artist. I'm no, sick of that needs, anime style. He needs a better editor because his oh, problem God. Is, Yes, he does. There's like and it, it kind of sucks because I want to like his stuff. It's just it's not good. Not great. It's not that it's not great. It's just I felt like that entire 18 issues was the same thing. They're just like, well, we got to go rescue these mutants from a 10 billion years ago. I don't care. Like, go back to either saving mutants in real time. Stop trying to make 2099 happen. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. The <laughs> only person who's ever survived that is Miguel. And oh, it's God. just because, like, because it, he's a good, he was a good character. Um, the problem with that thing is yo i was super hyped because the way it was seen that they were gonna resurrect genosha which made a lot more sense than bringing back these characters that no one gives a shit about yeah oh i can curse i'm not gonna curse curse oh yeah but... you can curse no yeah yeah it's, it's my um, like fuck it go go for it go for it <laughs> motherfucker no 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 <laughs> no no um the problem is, like, you introduced all these characters. I don't give a crap about them. Like, plus you have a team consisting of, like, what, 19 characters? And none of them really seem to do anything besides... Like, I, I, I can't remember, like, yes, a single Temple, plot thread. Yes, Temple and the Burt and the one lady can fuck. Yes. Yeah. Oh, like, that's interesting. Yeah, I, unless it, we can see it, we we not. It doesn't. It doesn't. Really, it just. We're just getting hints. I feel like. I feel matter. like. I feel like Kelly. Um, Kelly Kelly and, Sue would Kelly do Sue really well. Had destroyed that team that Duggan really spent twelve issues doing nothing with. She did like more for Lorna. Um. Laura and Rogue in canon too. Um in those like 10 issues, then they got in basically all of the Marauders and their 12 issue X-Men romp. That see, this is why I would bring in I, I said this in another video. I'm saying it again. I would bring in Kelly Sue, I would bring in Kelly DeConic. Um yeah, bring bring them in. She, like She's killed that that Captain Marvel. Yeah, she, it was a it was great, right? Like anytime great. she does Captain Marvel, it's a phenomenal. Yeah, she's amazing on Captain Marvel. Um and the her artist is on point. Oh yeah. yeah. She's also got yeah, they keep and that's the problem. I feel like I feel like I felt like this was their last ditch to get this Captain Marvel going. They're like, well, we gotta put X-Men in it. And yeah. And it's been better than like it's better than what Duggan's done with his side of that crossover. Uh, I, I I feel like I feel like ever since Hickman left, it's all over the place, and you know, I'm getting uh, you, you know what it's. I feel like I re I feel like um, Teeny Howard was really trying to go for it. Like she like mm -hmm. like um Gary Dugan doesn't really want it. Al Ewing doesn't want it. You could tell. Al, Al Ewing Al should Al have it. No, okay. I, I'm actually kind of pissed off with Al Ewing too because he created this whole bullshit conflict between Xavier and Storm mm -hmm. over a date we never saw coming. We were just like I, what's going on? Because I wanted to see Storm fall for that weak ass game. Because she falls for no. weak game. She uh, does. Forge, we love, we love, Cameron, we love it. Aurora, uh, Black Panther, Nightcrawler, Wolverine has the weakest game of all time. We I, I I mean, I mean, I feel like that was a big disappointment to me too when her and Wolverine hooked up. Is like both times working. she hooked and, up with both versions of the old man and the young man, which is gross. Like which is grosser. Remember, remember that. Remember that issue where she got her mohawk back, and it was like 
Wolverine cutting her hair in the shower. I was just like, this is the stupidest shit I've ever read in my life. Why? Why is this happening? And also, uh, I don't even get into this. I, I, I need to talk to you about that X-Men timeline is too fast for the rest of the Marvel Universe because there's been three galas already and... Um, it's it's really been three years been That's three years but it's been three years so three gals have happened but the rest of the Marvel Universe is still going by that timeline of a year is 35 years so no, you know actually you know what actually there's a way to oh god I got I gotta finish I'm working on this project where I can explain the entire Marvel Universe and how long mm-hmm. it's actually been going on Please. And so far, it's been around like fifteen years. Oh yeah, <laughs> fifteen years. Can you imagine all this bullshit <laughs> going on in a fifteen year so uh, time span? It, it, I mean, it makes sense in that situation. 15, oh well, fifteen twenty five years. Fifteen twenty five years. But I feel like I also feel like because they keep. So this is the problem, and this is the problem that's going to happen to X Men real soon. They're going to MCU the hell out of that, God, you, and you oh. know it's starting. You know it's starting because D twenty three is doing the Hellfire Gala at um, Comic Con. Yeah, and it's just, um, it's just for the cosplayers, like always. Now everything is just for Instagram likes, and you know, um, the. It, you just see these people and there's a lot of podcasts that like that they're the twitterfication of the x universe has gotten to the point where people just cheer for characters because they're there queer now and it's just no okay all right it's And I'm gonna tell you Yes, yes, okay. I yes, you're right. You're absolutely right. It is like that. Like I don't care about Negasonic Chi H Warhead. Who cares? She died one time and they brought her back as a joke. Yeah. Um, my problem is as a person who has been on this earth for over 40 years, I feel I know what pandering is, but I don't think a lot of people nowadays especially since everything is literally there for you to complain about yeah on a timeline is uh, pandering is worse to the gay um the lgp lgbtq plus community than people understand it because it's all and condescending it's really very condescending and it's very much that uh, I'm very happy. I'm very happy for kids nowadays that have the ability to be who they want to be because it's a lot more understanding than it was, say, you know, I grew up in the late 90s and it was getting better then, but it wasn't as... It was kind of stagnant. Now. Like, you, yeah. Yeah. Um, like, but, like you, like in media, I remember uh, growing up around. It, if there was a gay character, they they were always like comic relief, or like, um, or or like a or like a tale of the week, you know, like a episode. Oh, no, of the week. no, definitely. You know I mean? And like yeah. the thing was, growing up, you kind of picked and chose who you wanted to be your representation. And I don't think anybody would have chose Iceman, but there we go. Um, <laughs> no, okay, okay, okay. Real quick, real quick. Yeah. There have been a few, t- a, a lot, okay, I think a lot of people like the backtrack now. They love the backtrack and say, oh yeah, I totally meant it that way. Like, no, no, let's, let's, no, okay. Let's, let's throw like, this out North here. Star tried it, North Star tried out of, didn't work. Mystique. Yes. Gave him a mutant STD. I mean, it that worked. Was a mess. Yeah, it worked. Um, so here's the thing, and I feel like Iceman had been queer coded for a little while because if you go back to I think like thirty X Men thirty seven, 
when the ex babies returned, him and Gene are like hanging out in like a Barnes and Noble. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Back um, in, it happened like in '96. Yeah, I remember yeah, that. And it was kind of like he, she, he's like, you know, kind of stay out of my mind. And she's like, oh, Bobby, I would never do that. You know, I'm not, I'm not written by Brian Michael Bendis. So Damn. you know, I have, I have my actual, you know, Gene Gray, you know, personality. Um, I'm not just a Bar Brian Michael Bendis being Brian Michael Bendis in every character. Um, it's kind of like that. And then you also have, and we love, and we love Emma Frost for this because Emma Frost took over his body and knew everything that was going on, and she never blew it out of the, she never blew it out of the water either. She would have um, though. She, she like, yeah, yeah she would have definitely dropped a bunch of hints if she actually. Oh, yeah. Did. Yeah, but the thing is, it's fine. I don't care that like you, you, you pushed him into this, into the gay character, which is fine. I also get that as a person with Arrested Development, it would have taken him a while longer to come out of the closet, especially with his parents being the garbage people they are. The problem but, is once. Okay, he... can, can 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 we real quick? I'm sorry, real quick. I'm sorry. Yeah, a lot of people like to forget that. Um, Bobby's uh, bigoted parents got over that. Oh, hundred percent, a long 100%. time ago. But, but, but I mean, then, but then you also then you also have you know writers that just want to write their own personal experience, um, which is fine. Do an indie comic. Um, Damn. So, <laughs> yeah, right, we have I, continuity over here. <laughs> I, it's not even that. It's like you don't have to, you know. The biggest problem I had with that Iceman series was it was another pandering comic, which is fine. His parents got over everything. His parents have been to his ha he they've been to the X Men Thanksgiving. You can read if you go back right, to right was, after like, the Extinction like, Agenda. Yeah, Ice Iceman's dad got beaten yes. nearly to death because over he was defending his son. Yes. Like, so, what like, are they talking about? So, but here's the thing, like, and um, I, I I have met the writer, so we're not going to say names, and he is exactly how you expect him to be. Um, really? He's, I'm not even going to get into this. Okay. I know, I, I I'll think talk to you I about this I, privately. He's yeah, we'll, just, we'll, 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 we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. It's just... Uh, it's just, to me, it was another pandering series where it was not even Bobby coming out and, like, understanding. Like, the, there was nothing about him becoming a homosexual. It was just him dealing with his parent issues for 20 issues. And it's just like... People like to project that stuff onto other people. Like, no, he just had, a, like, a, a disagreement with his parents. It's yeah. not... A lifestyle change. Build a bridge. Get over it, man. You fought. You and your father didn't have a good time growing up. Get over it, bro. Um, but it's also like, I would have rather seen him as what are we gonna? What are we gonna age him at? About like twenty eight, twenty nine. If the rest of the X Men, you know what? If it were up to me, like Iceman would probably be like early thirties. That's what I would think too, because you would think that Rogue would be like late twenties, and she's a couple of years younger than them. I, I, you know what, Ashley? I would say Rogue's like thirty. She just hit thirty. Like, I, that's yeah. yeah so yeah. so she would have been like yeah. So this is the thing because also a lot of the um, second Genesis X-Men were adults when they were brought in like storm. Yeah, well, more, more so young. I mean, like, yeah. like I mean, like uh, I would say a uh, storm and nightcrawler were probably like 20 early 20s. Yeah, and, and at that point, the, the originals would have been like around 2021. 20, um, uh, they were about 20, yeah. About yeah. 20, yeah. So I get that, but you also have Banshee, who is older. He was always coded as older. Yeah, um, he was like late 30s around that time. Yeah, around yeah. that. And he stayed that way through Generation <laughs> X. Um, <laughs> no, no, but, no. Um, he, no, he got to be early 40s. He, he's yeah. early, he was early 40s. He was <laughs> early 40s before they killed him just to do an event comic. And then... Oh, man. That was... Man, did just slit his like I'm really surprised there's not a like a line of people waiting to just to kick Mystique's ass. Another thing too, like another thing. 
Um, so, uh, so back to pandering yeah, to the sorry. gay community. Um, we always knew Mystique and Destiny were gay. We yeah. always, it was never, it was Claremont just didn't have the authority to put an out couple into comics, but like it's there. And now you have, uh, and also Destiny's gotten to the point of annoying the shit out of me. She, she was amazing. She's become a, she's become a fortune teller. Ooh. She's become, she's become, so yeah. She's become the, uh, she's become the Alice of Twilight who is always like, Edward, like, something is going to happen. Well, what is it? Well, I can't really tell you because I don't know fully. But the thing is with Destiny, she's just gotten like, that's another thing where they took, Hickman made her into like this badass in like 10 panels or less. And now it's just her being like this sassy. Old woman. Old woman who's young and it's also like she's like, well, Mystique. And it's also like, bro, relax. Mystique is gonna be fine. Mystique has been killed 3,000 times. Also, you have a resurrection protocol now. So stop. Uh, but the my whole thing with Destiny is like, um well, yeah, you absolutely they cut they they love the pan. P Marvel likes to pander. They think that their audience is one way. Oh, and we'll and talk about like, pandering in a minute when we finish oh, this. But. Oh yeah, please. I'm sorry. Go for it. Oh no, no, no. The the Betsy Rachel relationship. Oh God. Which, I, I gotta tell you though, I gotta tell you uh, this fourth issue of the third relaunch <laughs> of Betsy <laughs> Braddock as Captain Britain in the last three years. It's so was, weird. It's so was, weird. <laughs> the first time I really felt that um, B side, so Teeny does have some 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 episodes of lucidity when writing, and there was that good issue when um her and Canon teamed up in the other dimension, right, right, in the other timeline, and they yeah, and the other timeline like where, but um that was a good issue written by her. She's had hit or miss good issues here and there. She just, uh, she can't, she, she needs an editor too, where she's all over the place. She needs a gym um, shooter. Somebody, oh my God, somebody everybody needs a gym shooter. Like, hey, I'm just saying, um, gym shooter is life, okay? Like, yeah. The I mean, <laughs> told, he's the one who told Chris Claremont, stop that shit, okay? Gene has to be punished. He's like, he's like She's gonna be she killed a lot of people, bro. Um so <laughs> the pandering of the so so as I said also Claremont um, does it too. Claremont does it. He oh, does he. He he's he's he but, wrote the book on. <laughs> but 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 Claremont at least you know with his fetishes and God I mean, let's let's go back to the Avengers two, the Avengers like um two hundred where they wrote off Cap um well Miss Marvel at the time with her rapist that she gave birth to, and the Avengers were kind of like, hey, you're happy now? She's like, no, not really, and they're like, okay, bye. Claremont stepped in and rewrote her, and you know he he's got in a he for a man at the time. He had a great voice for women. He could write women without them being, you know, yeah. the Sues that everybody yeah, like has that. become. Oh, absolutely. I, he, he knows how to do that. He knows how to do that. It, it's beautiful. But, like, yeah. he does, what he likes to do, he likes to make every one of his female characters horny for each other. Of course. And it's just like, I understand people hook up. I I understand things happen off panel. That's fine, but really, like, <laughs> really, like, um, <laughs> that's the thing. Well, <laughs> that's Claremont. Claremont's got a a weird fetish. Um, with young girls, and everything. Old He's got a fetish for everything. Um, so it was a good issue. This one that came out, and 
she actually started writing Betsy as Betsy and not this insecure character that she decided to self insert four years ago. Um, Psylocke is a badass. Betsy is a badass. She's it, always been it, a badass. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay. She, all right. Yeah. I'm sorry. Psylocke, like Betsy, I don't quite like she was Betsy. Like she was in the 90s. The that was like, Betsy. A lot of people like to see, a lot of people like to give her shit. It's like, oh, they they uh they color swapped her. Like, no, they did it. It was a body swap. They both were in different bodies. Quan, uh, a Quan, yeah, yeah. Quan, uh, Shaher, di Shaher's died. Yeah, her hers died, which kind of says that if Betsy was in that body, she would have died. This is the biggest problem I have with that whole Nicene taking over and making that into something that is canon is Claremont never meant it to be she was going to be Japanese forever. Yeah, it was not even really him. It was Jim Lee. He wanted to draw an Asian character, which I mean, you could have created one, which you did. It was Jubilee, but whatever. They made Psylocke into this badass ninja. She became this. She became like, and think about it like this: like a lot of people forget because they always push Storm now as the yeah. female ex woman that's in everything, which is fine, but. Betsy was in everything in the 90s. She was X. in every video game when there was a female character. Mm -hmm. um, and we're not even just talking about like the X-Men games. We're talking about like the um, all the Capcom games. Yep. 90% of the time, the first two were her and yep. um, Storm, and, which yeah, is, yeah. And, and like, like, Sto like Storm is, but like, it's not just her. Like, like you say, Betsy's like that. Rogue's like that. Uh, yeah. Rachel's like that. Kitty is like that. There's a yeah. whole slew of women who are badasses. You can do a whole bunch of limited series on. Yeah. But people like to focus on Storm. She is the Beyonce of the X-Men. And but fortunately, that's, also, that's a horrible like, thing. Yeah. And you also have to think about it like this, too. Storm is like considered an OG now to the X-Men because you know she has been with the X-Men yeah but the thing is Storm hasn't been written well since Claremont left and we all fail to realize there's been there's been good times where she was written well oh um when Lobdell wrote her pretty well a few times who Lobdell Oh yeah, he did. He did, but like that's ninety. No, no, no. We yeah. remember he's not Claremont. He can't. No. Like, you got. You got to give him his flowers too. No, he's fine. And I'm not. Look, no. But after the '90s, Storm kind of went into let's be a background character or be a wife. Like, um, yeah, that was the Black, last. That was Black Panther though. Black Panther made her like that was the weakest thing. Like, hey, I'm black. Hey, I'm black too. Let's do. That was the biggest. That was the biggest, like the fall. Racist. It was um, racist. A hundred percent racist. But it's also like, um, um, there were some. You're right. There were some good shots. Um, when McDuffie took over the Fantastic Four, and yeah. Storm and Takala was on it. That team. Oh, that was a that good, was a really run. that was a good run. That was a really good run. Yeah, it was a great run. And then we haven't had a good Storm since then and then the the next time she was great was when ewing took her over it, you know what i think there was another time there was another time when uh, storm series back in 2014 oh yeah the greg pack yeah yeah it was greg a good comic pack, oh, oh, wait, come on that was that was so good it was great that was a great comic too but the problem was it was that was also a comic that was canceled after seven issues or 10 issues something like that uh, 11 and, uh, yeah but you got uh, yeah I, but the, yeah but that's the thing too like you really didn't get anything from it but pack was great because he also took dazzler and made her a full-time badass with that extreme x-men series that was a comic that was cool. people that was slept cool. on that comic Bring, oh that's somebody else i would bring comic. back that's somebody else i would bring in i'll bring in greg pack like bring in some I mean, of the best 
Oh, and but, Mark but Wade. The thing is, Greg Pak doesn't. Ha- Greg Pak doesn't have Twitter followers that will don't, believe I don't care. everything. I, like that's but that's the problem, Derek. Okay. You're talking about somebody who wants. You're talking about people that like comics. We're not, you're not talking about people that just go onto Twitter once a week, take a screenshot. And go, yas, queen, yas. Look, like, hey, that's I would what let, Marvel wants. I would, I would let the, I would let the story speak for themselves because, like, people, like, at the end of the day, these people, we are all supposed to love X Men. But yeah, like, I want, I my whole objective would be, I want people to say, hey, did you check out that new Excalibur book? That was crazy. Oh, yeah, but that new X Force, never saw that coming. Like. No, yeah, no, but here's the thing. But here's the thing. You're going by wanting well written series. You're not going by quick one panel comic bites that people can post on Instagram and Twitter. And that's what Marvel wants because can, can but, you do that? You can you do both? Can you you can, both? but you're not gonna get that because you are Marvel needs to continuously hire fan fiction writers oh god that um you know wattpad writers and that's the biggest problem like people people are always so ignorant to what happened like what 10 years earlier because people are like uh even like jennifer lawrence was talking about oh you know katniss everdeen was the first female i'm like are you are you making a joke like my best friend and i her and I were talking about this, and I was like, I don't know if like Jennifer Lawrence is trolling people or she actually, because it's always like sound bites because you don't see anything anymore, you don't read anything anymore, you don't see interviews anymore. No. All you see is like headlines, and that's what people post. So, um, but people seem to forget that Louise, um, Louise Simonson was writing half of the X Men books in the eighties. You got um, Joe Duffy, who was writing a ser- a bunch of series for um, Marvel, and you also had um, what's her name, Anne Nosia, who yeah. was writing a crap ton for Marvel, and these were women that took, and they took their voice and wrote male characters, and, and nobody it, talks about it because it, it was under because it was under uh it was under the table, yeah. like. Who can't like the, these women are good and there are good there are good female writers. We just gotta yeah. like you know, we just gotta pluck out the bullshit ones. Like so, um there are there are a bunch of women that write and they're amazing. And um Stephanie Phillips is good, I, I guess. Love her. Stephanie, like her this world gambit run, I'm kind of like I think she's great. I, I I feel like this is, and I've had conversations with other X Men fans. This is very editorial to me because, and this is the problem too. Everybody is just so they see something and they go, "Oh no, this is exactly no." Uh, Rolling Gambit are in a good place. Like even yeah. Teeny, she didn't destroy them that badly because, no. like. Um, she, she made Rogue the fairy princess, and wrote and did. And Gambit was and Gambit was the, uh, her knight in shining army. That was awesome. He was also that was a cool. crab. Yeah. yeah. Um. But she, I feel it's very editorial because I feel like they have to get, they have to get them either in a bad place before the fall of X, because. Even if you've seen the last couple, like go go back to Kelly Sue writing Captain Marvel, it's uh, they're completely and utterly like he he went across space to save her from the brood. Like there's now, no, like, there's no now rough he's patch. like <laughs> no, and now he's like, and this is the dumbest thing too because, and this is how I knew because people started ripping her apart, and I'm like, guys, like, understand that this does not seem like her voice in any way, shape, or form. This seems very editorial driven because it, it, it's just ridiculous. Like, it's weird. She, Gambit, she's mad at Gambit for getting drunk. She's like, mad at Gambit for for uh for playing poker with um 
with a rhino and the thing and like are you serious no if anything she would join yeah she knows rhino <laughs> you also have um you also have stephanie williams and she's great too um she wrote the she's writing that nubia series for um yeah yeah she's really good i i listened to her on a podcast too. the other day she's really good she's amazing she's real she's got really good voice um and i know you don't like vita but um i do like her um i mean them i do like them yeah um it, it's so kind of like they write their characters so condescendingly like mm-hmm. um i, I got to say though look they wrote one of the best Maddie Pryors i've ever read yeah that- but but everything danny said came true though like a hundred but I, that was that that's another thing that I, that's another editorial move because she was set up to be in a good place and i think zeb realized that people oh, I, i'm gonna tell you right now um maddie got the gays in her corner i'm gonna tell you maddie got oh, no, the gays oh, oh i know uh, i know Andrew, plus i know in her the corner spurn, the spurn divorce moms and the gays oh yeah I know. oh my god that that and the fact that they were like you know, Vita took Maddie and put her in a good place at the end of that arc. And now you're like, yeah, but she never saw Baby Cable. And I'm like... But she did see Baby Cable. She That's really- another thing, because no one knows how to fucking... Oh, you see, I cursed now. Yeah. And nobody knows how to go back and read back issues. Don't, like They have the chance not law firm for She-Hulk back where well, they had the back issues in the library. They have interns at, at literally there. They are oh, like, no, no, here's the thing. A lot of these, like we, like you said earlier, a lot of these writers are fan fiction. They only pick and choose what they want. Mm-hmm. They don't look at it. They just want to do their version of the character. They don't want to do the char- the the actual version. Claremont yeah. does this a lot, and that's why I say he's kind of a hack. He's so in love with his own legend. Seriously. Well, that's why I talk about, like, Claremont hasn't been good since they fired him in 1992. You, like, you, you know what? I No, no, no. I, mm, no, no. Extreme what? X-Men was really good. Was it though the first maybe two arcs was good and then yeah yeah yeah, yeah no yeah and it got I mean. into that like storm and Callisto oh. with the squid arms and the fighting tournament for like seventeen issues oh no 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 to hell with all that I mean everything up to uh Cannonball joining the team oh yeah definitely that first couple of arcs were great I mean even though he killed my 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 the love of my life. Betsy Braddock in this. She hey, she went movie. out like a soldier though. Yeah, she went out like a badass. She went out saving beast. And how bad does she feel now that she let this guy fucking live? Like, <laughs> That's so um, funny. but um, I, no, but it, it, I really get the feeling that nobody really talks to him anymore. Everybody just like think because it seems like in in the books, you know, it seems like all they do is talk shit behind his back. But, but the thing is too, like. But they all do that, though. That's the that's that's why I say that. Some I gotta tell you, like I was you. the world's like Beast was my guy next to uh next to um Bets as my two favorite characters of all time, and True. the bastardization and villainization of him, uh, it's rough. So bad that like, and it's, it's also like too like Percy. Let's go back to Percy. Bro, you've been writing this arc for forty issues with Wolverine and Beast. Like, it's like every issue is just like, it, it like there's trade writing, and then there's what are we doing? Like, you can have three, two, two, three issue arcs in a trade paperback, guys. But then, like, but when he's on, he's on. He made oh no, Deadpool, they're so, made Deadpool hilarious. So here's the thing. I was going back his first like the first like 10 15 issues of X Force before um before he started getting like insane was amazing. <laughs> it was one of the best books out there. It was one of the best of the Dawn of X. Yeah, it um, was good. Cuz you know, cuz X Force had a reason to be around. Wolverine yeah. had a re- well, I didn't really understand why Wolverine needed his own book, but it was cool. You have to because 
because you have to. Wolverine has to have a book. On no, no, else. no. Forget that. I would cancel Wolverine, replace it with Maverick. Give yeah, Maverick I would just, book. I would just cancel a lot of books right now. Um, what are yeah? What books would you cancel? Uh, I, I mean, I, I think, I think, I think sales have determined already. Um, that Marauders <laughs> got canceled. Um, d- this Betsy Braddock. Captain Britain, and they keep pushing this too, and I'm just like, guys, they're like, look, she's a female, and she's got her own book. I'm like, yeah, like every other female you give a book to, and let me tell you something, Derek. For gays to start turning against female characters is yeah, getting to weird. the point of over the top. Now, um, this Rachel Betsy relationship, I don't buy it. Is the I dumbest thing I've it. ever seen, and I'm getting so tired of people on all the everything being like, "It's the most beautiful thing." Here's the it, thing: you don't Teeny, buy it. <laughs> cannot make, cannot convince me in any way, shape, or form that her and Betsy belong together. I don't give a shit. Betsy could be with whoever she wants to be, and I would love it if you wrote Rachel correctly, okay. like she's been. Okay, okay, seriously. All right, I've been saying this for a minute. Betsy gets bored. She will be with a person until she gets bored. We saw it. Betsy is with also Thunderbird. Huh? Betsy is also digmatized. Like, oh, by, I oh, get, by I get, Mark I get Angel. It. Yeah, but she's also like, she's digmatized by, she loves Dick. Like let's not let's not put it out there. Um, no, no, no. She loves Archangel's dick because she keeps coming back. She but that's but coming. also like look like she's she is she's a she wolf. She wants a guy. She gets her guy. Now, how odd is it that she banged both Summers kids and tried to have sex with Papa Summers in nineteen ninety three? Hey, hey. Be careful. She may go out to Grandpa Summers yet, and it know. could not be that much of a fight. I know. Corsair? Oh, Corsair. Oh, Corsair. Like, oh, Corsair. Oh, he'll tear it up. He'll tear it but, up. But it's also like, you're sitting there, and you're like, and here's the thing, Teeny, uh, I, I gotta give credit where credit is due. She does write a compelling Betsy flirt with others. Yeah. Um, Pete Wisdom and her had great sexual chemistry, chemistry yeah. together. Saturn 9 and her had amazing sexual chemistry together. I didn't really see it. I always thought it was kind of like hateful. Like she's like, yeah, I'm nice to you, but I don't, I hate you. So I don't, I don't, it's weird. I don't see, I don't see besides that maybe her and Rachel, like besides being friends, which has, you know, really. There's only been like two times where Betsy and Rachel have actually interacted with each other. And one was when Claremont retook over Uncanny. Yep. Before they took it away from him again. Um, and then two was Oh, oh, when... oh, oh back in to- back in um oh four, uh when um when Rachel and when Rachel and um right before House of M. Yeah, they were buddies. Yeah. They were like hanging out. Yeah. But, like, that was the one time. And then the second time was when um, they were on the all-female X team. That was a great – oh, that was a great run, too. That was a that was a good time. That team. was a great run. That was a great run, too. The problem with that run was Brian Woods turned out to be a piece of shit. So what did he do? He was, like – um picking up girls or like kind of forcing them into jobs basically you didn't know that no so they brought him in for fallen angels so they brought him back for falling this is a dude no that's not that's not that's not brian brian woods no brian woods is different um that was brian what's his name no fallen angels that's that mess um that was brian um now and no way everything's about um no so brian um that but and then you go to that that run and rachel was banging john sublime and oh my oh 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 let oh let's not forget remember that one remember that one dude 
that Rachel was banging during the Wolverine Enemy of the State. She was banging that uh that shield agent. Yeah, she ever talks about- Here's the thing. Rachel Rachel is coded lesbian and a lot of people code her as a Hill. lesbian. Because- I'm sorry. Brian oh, know. Hill. Okay. Yeah. So Rachel has been coded as a lesbian because she's had short hair her entire run. Like that but like Rachel was never into girls. Like Rachel was always a dick hound too. Her and Betsy are both confirmed dick hounds. And if you're gonna have Rachel be with anybody, it's gonna be Kitty fucking Pride. Like Oh no, no. Rachel's way too good for Kitty. No, no, you know, Kitty has destroyed every person she's ever been in a relationship with. Colossus, yes, Kitty has wisdom, that shield agent yes. she messed around with, Doug. That's her thing. Like, like that's her thing. She's she is she is also has been the most boring character since Joss Whedon beat made her Sarah Michelle Galar. Oh God. Um, that, I'm still uh, mad. About that, how that. we got to that point where we can say Astonishing X Men was not good? Like okay, no, there were good parts in it. When it okay, okay, all right. When the it first, came out, the first it was arc the big, was an amazing arc. Okay, yeah, yeah, the first arc. All right, it plays out like a TV show, and also yeah. kind. I of, also it, it has a special place in my heart because it was my it was Josh Whedon direct after Angel. It came out the same year that Angel can't got canceled. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Let me tell you because. My boyfriend and I are full blown Buffy Angel heads. Um, Angel was better though. Angel was a better show. It was after the third season. True. No, that first season. season is one of the worst shows ever created. After the second season, it got better. Season two got great. Yeah. So we, so we during quarantine, we started um, the. Re- Oh no, no! It was last year because quarantine. We did like a bunch of movie series, but um, we started the rewatch of Buffy and Angel, and I gotta tell you, slogging through that first season of Angel just to get those two really good episodes was a nightmare. Like there were times where we were just like, let's just not watch Buffy or Angel for a couple of weeks because <laughs> we knew which episodes were coming up, and now we're in like season two, and. It's it picks so up. much better. And, <laughs> yeah. And then season three is when it's off the rock. It's oh, like off God. the rails. Oh. It continues. I, I still remember when they those came on, like when they debuted. I was like every yeah. Monday, I was ready. I was, are oh. you kidding me? Like, are you kidding me? Like Buffy and Angel were appointment television when there mm-hmm. wasn't appointment television. I remember going to school and my best friend and I were both deep into Buffy at the time. And her and I would record them because we were in class. So we would have to come home. Then hopefully the recorder worked. And then oh, we rewound it. And then we had to watch it. And then we called each other at like 10 o'clock because um, that was the, uh, the uh, there's nothing better than those two shows. No, right? Okay. Okay. Ain't, okay. Ain't, Buffy got good. Then it got bad, but it got good again. Yeah, Buffy, we got we we made it, it through season four. Season four is the worst season of Buffy. What? Season four? Really? That's the season Guys, I jumped there's on. There's like two or three great episodes in season four, yeah. but season four is a slog. Like, I don't care about her going <laughs> to college, which the problem is, the biggest problem with Buffy going to college is after season four, it's never touched upon again. True. Like, like she, uh, she'll she show had, up she, and she'll she be like, down. Oh, she had to drop test. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but or she'll be like, hey, me and Willow are taking a test, but like they stop with college completely. Um, okay. I like the fourth season because it was it came out, it was when I jumped on and it mm-hmm. was when I started high school. So I was just like I was like that target demographic. So um, I which is funny because I just so many cameos that year. The first season came out when I was about to graduate high school. And then um, that first season is a little rough, but at least it has an end point because I knew he was like, I don't know if this is going to get picked up. So we got like (laughs) 10 episodes. We got to end it. But um, 
yes. Do I think that Buffy would have been fine if it ended in season five? Yeah. Yeah, it would have been fine. She dies. Season dies. six um, was season rough. Season six. That was season rough. Season six is rough, but it's a tough season, but it's also got really some banger neat. episodes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Once more, we're feeling. Um, I know a lot of people don't like to see it, but what Spike what Spike did to Angel and what Spike did to Buffy in that bathroom, the attempt the oh, attempted okay. scene, you needed to see it. We so like that, it, it that, was needed. That is something that is something that like they they know they made a mistake. They knew yeah. they made a mistake the episode ran because like right after that they were like, Okay, well Spike has to get a soul like on his own to make him seem like he's worthy for Buffy. But and Angel never always... found out because Angel would have killed his ass. Oh, he would have killed him. He would have killed him. But I still think that they did a big misstep because I think Buffy and Spike were, were perfect together. I think they're better than her and Angel. You know, I'll, you know, I get that. I, I, I'm with that. Like, uh, Spike had no problems with with Buffy being who she was, and exploring who she was. Angel, Angel broke her multiple times. Like broke her but you know what so who, what? so uh, so if if kitty pride is uh buffy that would make colossus angel then who would be spike uh, well 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 if you if you read the first if you read uh, no there's no spike it's it's joss whedon has voices if you read that, oh, yeah. their voices are literally buffy characters like you oh, have, no, oh no no it, no um, it's true it's true i just like you know i just yeah. I, I just like yeah. get into if, the if kitty pride if kitty pride was spike would be a yana oh god i i just like what he i, I just like what whedon did with cyclops just oh, like no, 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 put, no. put them back together no. Put like strung the them problem, apart, the just problem. Put them right back together, and made them the coolest superhero in the universe. Don't even get me freaking started because I am a Cyclops apologist until the day I die. Thank you. I took his side on the schism, which was the worst schism ever. Uh, they were just like, he, "Oh, don't train." Okay, Wolverine, Wolverine was a bitch. Let's talk about that. He was don't a even get me started. Bitch. That was the dumbest thing. The dumbest thing, which also created one of the greatest comic sequences of all time, and right. that was the the Genesis issue where they were dressed as cavemen and yeah. Cyclops had the lion head on, and um, it was just so freaking bizarre. And I'm like, and and you know, here's the thing: if you go back and schism, everything Wolverine said to all he did was like so propaganda against Cyclops. First, everything first he, he he no. Wolverine is a bitch. He's always been a bitch. Like, no, and like, and he, and like, he knows that Cyclops is not as popular with everybody, and he is, and he uses it because he's a bitch. Like, oh, uh, Storm does it too. She's a bitch too. But I mean, because like, let's not forget, she put a hit out on Marrow, and, yeah. and just saying. Nobody wants to give Mero her flowers on that. Um, Nobody wants to give Mero anything because Mero is the bomb, and um, the, like people hate that. But we were talking about it today because you posted the twenty five years ago, yeah. And it's true that comic though that was a great team. Yeah, you have really Mero, you have um, you have Maggot who people hate Maggot, and I'm like, I love man. I loved him back then. I thought he, me too. I thought Maggot he had was the boss, and you got CC fucking Ray. CC is one of the baddest ass comic characters, and she's a, she's always and she's like, I boy. don't have time for this crap, guys. I'm an actual doctor. Okay, like, I have I have so like I'm a I'm a doctor, not a mutant hero. Yeah, <laughs> she like, was almost the Scotty of the X Men. But just love her so much because, and then like Beast, and and that was another thing. Like her and Beast had great chemistry together, and they ruined that like always. But like it's also like the issue. I think it was seventy five. Yeah. When Beast is like, you need a costume, and she's like, Oh god, the wasp costume. costume. (laughs) That was got her in the wasp costume, and it's just like the great, and she's just in the wasp costume. 
And German Garcia, God, what happened to him? He's so he good. He's such an amazing artist. I love, I like, love the, that, like, that 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 uh, that issue I posted this morning on Instagram. It's probably like one of my favorite little arcs of uh, the Joe oh Kelly God. run because it's so good. Yes, the is on point. I love the team. I care about all these characters. Uh, the fact they yeah. brought in Psylocke, just like oh. What, oh yeah, we need a ride. Uh, Storm's like, yeah, let me call the homie. Sai's so yeah. like, yeah, yeah, but what's also, up? Right like, here. <laughs> and and also like that was Joe Kelly getting rid of Psylocke because he didn't want to deal with her baggage, and instead you created one of the greatest Psylocke arcs ever made, and it's three yep. issues, and it's perfect. Oh, perfect. also. I wish, I, all right, this is just something with X-Men for me. I want to see them more dap each other up. Like, the yeah. close friends, we see them, like, dap it, like, you know, just, like, their own little handshakes. But, like, like so, this so, fun. This is, and this happens a lot with Psylocke and Storm, because they're they are very they're close. Big, they're friends. They're really they're close. Friends. They're, like, really close friends, and, like, you don't get that, and this is the biggest problem. And the biggest problem I've had with the uh, uh, Krakoa age is they're not hanging There's out. No friendships. No one hangs out. Like they're literally on this island, this sex island, and nobody does anything. They're always just like on missions. And you're like, yeah, but like, oh, oh, you remember oh, that? Like, remember that one panel they had showed? Like they were at the Green Lagoon. It was Storm hanging out with Domino, yeah. Mystique, and Spider Gwen. Yes. I'm like, first of all, Storm would never hang out with Mystique ever. Yeah, I know. Well, that like, was Domino, that was maybe. Because, Domino, maybe. That, Domino, Swagger, that was maybe. that was all because um, that was for the Fortnite. Oh yeah, oh uh, for the um, because uh, Fortnite because Exoswords. like Swords, yeah, Exoswords, yeah, yeah. There was the Fortnite like crossover, and they were like a couple of Marvel comics. They did like a stealth like two like two pages. Yeah, where like Thor would disappear and then come back, and like Sif was like, "What the hell were you at?" And he's like, "I don't know." Oh, but, it's like, a tie-in. Yeah, you know, like I hate Storm I hate hates shit. Mystique. Like she hates Mystique, and everybody does though. Like it's I, weird I, that like people like the current the Twitter the ex Twitter they forget that a lot of them ex Twitter forgets like, everything that doesn't happen in the issue that they're reading that week. X Twitter is like Betsy and and Betsy and Fe and uh, Rachel are perfect together, and you're like, but they're not. Like every issue lately has been like. Also, like Teeny Howard has gone back to Rachel when she was in the Revolution, Chris Claremont, where she was like a sixteen year old again. All of a sudden, remember, like when she yeah. was just like Emma Frost, you're having sex with my father, and she's oh, like, God. Yeah. oh, the regression, I hate yeah. it. I miss my like, mom. Like every issue was her crying about my mom. Like, oh my god, girl, uh, build a bridge, get over it. Like you're like, an adult. It's not, it's, and stop blaming Cyclops for like. Okay, first of all, oh, okay. Here's something about that whole thing that always kind of pissed me off. Um, everybody knew about Wolverine and Gene messing around. Right. It was an open secret, but Rachel got mad at Cyclops because he moved on. She should have been like, oh, shit. Uh, Dad, I kind of knew, too. And we made bets on how long it would be but before biggest, we figured it out. The only thing I'll ever have an issue with is the last arc with the Morrison. Morrison, one of the greatest X-Men runs in, like, forever. It's, um, yeah, it was great. It was good Everything was perfect until you went to Magneto becoming a psychotic dictator thing. Like, because he was on kick. It was weird. It was yeah, so it was weird. weird. It was stupid. Um, I, and, and, you know, the thing was, I loved Zorn. I thought like yes. I thought Zorn was going to be like a well, power. Everybody loved Cyclops. Zorn. That's why they brought him back as 17 different Zorn characters. Remember yeah. Chuck Austin having like Shen Zorn and then Zuki the Zorn? Twins, yeah. 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 And then like, uh, shut up. You're so stupid. No, Chuck no but I thought Zorn was going to be like Cyclops' buddy, his friend that who's like, they're both kind yeah, of they were, they were it out when they blew up the freaking the the Shiara, the after they're yeah, like that yep. was awesome right yeah they're like pounding it out I'm like but like yeah. here's the thing too like everybody knew Gene and Cyclops were going through problems like 
you can see from the first issue where like they're sitting in bed and she's yeah. kind of like, hey, is everything all right? And he's like, I'm fine. You know, he it, just it, had it, a but, pot but, take over him. But Jean, though, she was so condescending. Yeah. Like, she, he was like, I had an evil spirit inside my head. I've never been possessed before. And he tried to talk Sorry, to her about it. She was like, oh, you're fine. <laughs> um it's yeah. like you're fine. You you'll be you'll get over it. <laughs> it's like he's like, bitch, I'm going through I'm going through an existential crisis. Yeah. But it's also like it's also a lot of people like got so mad, but you also have to understand that sometimes people fall out of love like that's also the problem is i still think cyclops is stronger with emma and the story you know what i think cyclops has a happy ending with gene but he's more of him he's more of a warrior with emma but here's the thing a happy ending means nothing when you're not in love with the person there that's not a happy ending that you know, you know, you're right. You're absolutely right. Like honestly, I like them both. All right, I started out with Scott and Gene. I like, I know how well they work together. If you all right, Scott and Gene work together kind of like Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie did in Mister and Mrs. Smith. Yeah, when they found out about each other's like at in the you know the last scene. Yeah. Uh, Scott and Emma. I'm with it too. Scott was allowed to be more of himself with Emma. Emma never judged him. No. Scott was able to create X Force under Emma's nose. Yeah. And she never and she and she never just like, oh damn. I gotta I gotta pay more attention to this geek. Yeah. Hold he's on, doing so he like he's kind of an evil genius. But here's the thing too. Scott needed to get shit done. Yeah, of course. And, but and I also wonder what would Gene I also wonder how Gene would be during this era. She would have been Gene. No, been I Jean. mean I I don't know. When she came back, she said, like, you know, seeing what you've been through, I would have been there right there with you. She would have. Here's the thing. Gene, and this is the biggest problem I'm having with this new arc where like Duggan oh. wants to break them up. Oh it's yeah, like... this okay, okay. I get it. I love it, but I want an actual argument. I want to see a, a but, full issue where they argue. But here's the thing, Derek. Um stop. Stop just breaking people up. Like it's not dramatic anymore. Like you uh, you know uh, and the problem is too, I feel like I feel like everybody forgot what Krakoa was. It was kind of like they everybody could just bang together. whoever they wanted to. No one gave a crap anymore. <laughs> and it was also like, you know, uh, uh, the problem with and the biggest problem I have is like I, I'll never uh, I hate Wolverine. I, I hated He's such Wolverine. such a bitch. But like the fact that he was like living with them on the moon. Okay, he was a bum who didn't want to yeah. deal with his own kids. And yeah. he ran away. He left yeah. the planet. He's <laughs> hanging out with them, like, on the moon. And, um, like, he's got a room next to them. And it's just like, guys, enough. Like, like enough. that's too much. Like, they're, he's pushing boundaries. At this point, <laughs> might as well just give Madeline, Maddie, a play, um, a room out on the, uh, everybody just Emma gets a room. No, Emma's too good for that shit. She'd be like, No, I got I got my own castle. I got my yeah, own seriously. I got I got the white towers. Anyway, but like um uh, Emma allowed Scott to take lead, whereas I feel like Jean would have been like No, like I'm gonna take lead because I've dealt with more than you. Or let's co-lead. And the thing is, Emma was busy. And the thing is, Emma... And my love for Emma Frost is... And the problem with Emma Frost is, like... Emma's a, Emma's a good thing. side chick. She keeps her mouth shut. Well, the thing is with Emma... 
<laughs> meant to be on field duty. She wants to be an educator. She wants to be teaching these kids. Like, so she's, you know, with Jean, it was like a side by side decision. And you could see that in this current, where they're like always running things by each other. Right. I don't give a shit about X Men. Like, I, I'll do it because I love you, man. But like, I want these kids. Um, right. The biggest problem I have, and this is the problem, like, I'm not shitting on Duggan because it is good. But the problem with Duggan is he, um, he's with Emma right now that he's not allowing her bruises to be shown anymore. Like, even with Firestar, he's like, well, she never killed the horse. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. He's been, Emma but- did bad shit. Like, <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. He's been re- uh, revisiting her past a lot because um, what really got me was um, remember that Marauders issue where um, they went back into her past and they talked about Shaw's ex wife, Lorda Chantel. Yeah. And she ta- they talked about how, like, Emma helped helped her escape and by faking her death, which which is hilarious because you know as well as I do that Emma back in that day she didn't give a fuck. She would be she would have been yeah. like, go fuck yourself. Yeah, I'm I, mean, I tell get him it. Just I to get you. on you. See, this is the thing. I get that. I get that like um that you want to make her but the thing is the best thing about Emma is she knows she's an asshole. Yeah. And she knows she did asshole stuff. And she's constantly trying to to try to do better, cover from that, and that's what when you make her once again, and this is the biggest problem. You keep making everybody marry Sue's, and I'm talking about men character too. Like, let them have some dirt on them. No, you're allowed to be a dirtbag sometimes. She was a terrible person at one point of her life, and I and here's the thing: you enrich that backstory as good as it was where her father was a piece of garbage her father was a hateful person sure. who treated her family like garbage yeah um and you and then you bring in shaw shaw is a piece of shit shaw has never been a good character like a, a and i don't mean a good character i mean like a good yeah, person a good person like, yeah you're right yeah. no no yo shaw's yeah but here's the thing though yeah. shaw has been consistent he's never yeah. He's never tried to be anything different from what he is. He yeah. know he ain't shit. He's like, he's like, he he's bribing the guards in hell to keep his dad in jail. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then you have this. And then you have, like, Fraction. Fraction was very hit or miss with Utopia. Yeah. The problem with Fraction is... Um, I think Marvel got He had too much on his plate to cover everything. And the biggest problem, I and I'll bring this up in a second, but uh, the issue that I had, Fraction did write that amazing Emma arc where she was really trying to kill Shaw. Um, and it, he brought up the fact that he was a piece of garbage. He was abusive. He treated everybody like that. A, there was that one issue where she brought up, I think Fraction brought it up, where she was friends with these two other girls that were basically trying out for the the White Queen. And right. then he was like, well, now you have to choose one of them and the other one gets beaten to death. And she was like, buddy, it, it's always me. So I don't give a crap about these other two girls that I went to. And he basically beat the shit. He killed these two women, became white queen. And, and you know, in Twitter would say that, oh, she was put in an impossible choice. She had to save herself or them. And like, like, no, 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 no. No, she, she knew what she was doing. She's yeah, a she dick. And she says she knew what she was doing. Also, she also. Knew it. He, because, he regrets that. Also, because she was an asshole, I'm pretty sure she likes messing with Bobby, making him like, you know, I don't know. If you're a telepath, wouldn't you want to make somebody question what uh what's some of their fundamentals? Like, I can totally yeah. see Emma uh making Bobby think that he was gay. <laughs> Just the best. Oh, yeah, totally. 
I would, she would totally that. mess with him. <laughs> and he's thinking about it. He's but, um, like, oh, what? he's like, oh my god, I saw a cannonball in a speedo one time, and I, and it made me feel weird. And she's just messing with him about that. <laughs> I feel like, but here's the thing: not with Saint Emma because they've made her Saint Emma. So like, oh god, I hate like Saint Emma. No, Saint Emma. No, that is not. No, we've talked about this in the past. Emma, anytime she's mad that some she gets manipulated, it's like. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You. This is the problem. You. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. Like, I would call you be like, Gary, she yeah. really mad that she got manipulated. Yeah. Oh. She's pissed about that. What? Because, Why? Like, she's like, well, Emma always be one step ahead of everybody else. And when she gets manipulated, she gets pissed. It's kind of like, you know, uh, it, it's it, she's, that, she's a hypocrite. She's like, she's no, I'm better than this. I'm better than this. I'm better than this. I shouldn't be manipulated. But here's the thing: um, she fell in. And Saint Emma what? now, and this is the thing: Emma now, where like everything done wrong has been retconned. So now she now like, she's I'm waiting for them wrong. to retcon the time when she switched minds with Storm and like. I don't really think I don't really think she's really been retconned though. Not really. Like they acknowledge that she was part of the Hellfire Club. They acknowledge that she did some horrible things. And but they don't like they say like, oh, she was still a good person, but like, really? You can't really lie to lie to us. We know that no. she was a piece of shit. She does it. And here's but, the thing. So and here's the thing too. Um and you're uh, but like Leah Williams, though, to go back to writers. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Please, Leah Williams, very hit or miss for me, and I do like her um a lot when she's got a good grasp for characters. I feel like she's been editorial downgraded a lot too, because that trial of Magneto Ugh. is a mess. I um, famously, I famously said, put my thoughts on the subject. That X Factor, that X Factor would have been good if they would have allowed it to be what it was the first couple of issues. And what was it supposed to be? It was supposed to be them investigating death so they could return people. Like would, and yeah. And it also wouldn't it be really nice if they wouldn't it be really nice if they found out if they discovered that Moira was alive? Wouldn't that be yeah. a really good story? Like a like a good mystery? But here's the thing, too, and this is the problem, and this is the problem that I, I've i had with people that I've talked to. Crossovers, are they really bringing in that much income to Marvel no. that there's a crossover every three months now? Every two. Like, like this, this, that, that, Axe. that, the one with Axe, Axe was the waste, the biggest waste of time ever. You literally destroyed so much storytelling by doing this. And you know what's the thing? Maybe you don't need every book crossing over with a main a mini series. Like, yeah, like because remember what um what Morrison uh what Morrison uh, was doing. Oh, it was before, done. Uh, um, yeah, there was no crossover. Okay. Well, that I... was the thing too. It made sense. He was telling a story. This is the problem. Like. And the only person who, to go back to Al Ewing, the only person who is able to take these crossovers in stride is him because he can write around it. But the problem with that now is there's so many breaks between storyline that even though he is slipping in things, part of his actual storyline, there's a big miss of like this. He's too much this, of a team player. Yeah. But the thing is also, then you have other comics like X-Force. And this is the problem. So, uh, Colossus has been a secret agent for what? 30 issues now? It no, but but in story, it makes sense why. Because uh, the Chronicler said it like, hey, he's it's totally undetected from everybody. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm with that. I'm with but that. I'm but fine like, with that. Like, look, I don't care about that. 
But the thing is, you haven't touched on it in 30 issues. Because no, like, nobody's looking at Colossus. Because remember, this is a kid. Because the, the fact that no one's been, noticed that Colossus is mind controlled tells you how much everybody's so self centered on themselves. Mm -hmm. Like, Storm would have, Storm would have picked something up. She would have, like, and that was the biggest problem I had with that whole. Yeah, yeah, like, oh, yeah, you're my, uh, yeah. Because it was just like, and this is the biggest problem I have with Gillian Storm. Because, like, remember, she was just like, what the hell did you do, Professor Xavier? Blah, blah, blah. I'm done oh, with you. God. And it's just like, shut up. Like, stop. This is not Storm. This is not Storm. I don't um, understand why she was mad. He, like, why couldn't she just give him what he wanted? I it's, get it. it, it was, I get, she was I being get, pity. I get, I get from Ewing's standpoint because her and this is the funniest thing about when you go back and you go back to Gillian's Uncanny, which is one of the I think one of the strongest X Men runs in a long time. Yeah, Storm, Magneto, and Psylocke were like Three's Company. Yeah, they were buddies. Like and. It, there was a lot of issues where, you know, at first Magneto bothered the hell out of Betsy, but then like they became buddies and then um, him and Storm. And then you had Ewing taking that seed and making it into this full blown tree and Professor X being petty about Storm hanging out with Magneto when like he was like, well, well I wouldn't even know. He would not be petty. He would not be like, no, just like, no, it's like, I just want to know what, like, what, okay, what I, what I basically got out of that issue was that Xavier was lost and he was like, I wonder what Eric, I wonder what Eric would do. And he I wanted to get, he wanted, he wanted a guiding light. I still felt like that was very, that was another editorial push because I don't know if they need to make Professor X not liked by everybody. I mean, he does it by himself very well. Um, no, no, come on. No, no, this is a demonization. This, no, I've, I've said this before. Marvel has an issue with making intelligent people, intelligent oh, adults yeah. into villains. They all do it. That's why. But Reed, Tony, Banner, Pink, Xavier, Beast, like, but the young character, the young geniuses. Oh yeah, they're fine. They're yeah. fine. Oh yeah, they could they could be wrong. Oh, but they're never wrong because they're. But, but I mean, but Xavier's always been a bit of a dick. Like, not, not okay. Okay, give me all right. Come on, lay it on me. I I, I want some. Well, I'm, not, well, I'm not saying. I'm not saying like Xavier was always shaded as a dick. It was not until Joss Whedon where they were like, "You made a sentient danger room." I'm like, oh, "Okay, God. okay, that, all right, that's a, okay, that's another thing. The, the, the danger room, that's all bullshit because we, okay. I want a timeline. I want to know when, because if it is when I say it, think it is, on slide. Can't First, blame here's on thing. slide. But Derek, I'm, I'm like, look, here's the thing. <laughs> this is my, my biggest problem with the Joss Whedon run because. That was another thing that was like, well, we have a big creator. Um, let's just let him do what he wants to do. And then he was like, well, let's send. I mean, we got danger out of it. And I sure. do love danger. And but we got armor. We also got that terrible brotherhood arc where it was, where it was like. Uh, Sandra Nova, Shaw, Negasonic, Emma, yeah. like, ew. And then it was just Gross. like. And then remember, like it ended, and they're like, "Well, they're going into space." I'm like, "But, but what? We we, we just you know? got he, we, they just got break world was, was dope. Biggest... Break world was dope though. Break world was really yeah. good." But here's the thing: this is my biggest problem with trade paperback writing. Yeah. You have this, and also remember, Cassidy took forever. Those comics were like six months between. So, like, that was I think the biggest problem with that arc too that it was taking so long for it to get to point but it, but it delivered though when it delivered it came through when it delivered, it it delivered. Good. but like but reread it yeah. reread it now um reread it as a full-blown arc that first gifted was good yes 
Um, the second danger was all right. Um, character the, assassination. Yeah, and then you got that one where it was the the what the breakdown the of were. the break the mental break. Okay, see, I was seeing it as a TV show. Mm -hmm. I was like, like, like I said earlier, it 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 really felt. Uh, but Derek, here's it, the thing with the TV show: I don't have to wait seven months for six six episodes. Fair enough. That 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 is very true. But when you read it no. all together, it feels like a TV. Oh, no, no, perfect. When you yeah. read it all together, but at that point, no one was trade waiting because it was taking forever for actual issues to come out. Fair. And that was another thing where it was not. They gave him carte blanche where there was no crossovers or anything like that either. True. Man, so, Whedon was crazy. But anyway, um. But now I don't feel like there's a full blown storyline on any of these books. I feel like Hickman what, left. What, like, what is the objective of each book? Like the there only one no. I can, the only one I can actually no, actually three I actually know. Mortal X Men. Let's talk about the Council. X Men. Talk about Kakoa's X Men. Um, X Men Red. Arako. That's all I know. Yeah. Everything else is just like what? But now, like, but now, Immortal X Men is fine and dandy, but that's another one that got pulled into crossovers. So, like, True. and you have that good Nightcrawler issue, but it's still like a crossover issue. That was. And you also have oh, that no, 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 good... no, no, no. The X Exodus... the... actually all all three of them were good. Like the mm -hmm. Shaw Exodus and the Nightcrawler one were all the Exodus was one of the greatest single issues in the last. Oh like, my god! Years. Right? Was For it... me to actually give a crap about Exodus after I being know. around since nineteen ninety one, but ninety four. But I got no, no ninety six. But I'm with you. No, but um, no ninety, no ninety one. You're right. No, I, I was thinking of X Men. You're right. Um, but also. Shaw, it made you like, you know what? He's a piece of shit, but I like this guy. Yeah, he's he a, he's said, a he said, when I when I die, I'm gonna leave with uh with a flask of some top shelf a whiskey and a fatty in my pocket. I know I'm going to hell. I'm like, you know what? Yeah. Good it's, on you, I'm bro. Gonna beat as, I'm gonna beat as many women to death on my way down there. Fuck him. Um, hey, no, anyway, no, 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 fuck him, but he, like, yeah. I like him as a villain. No, I mean, no, Gillian is good at writing characters. He's yeah. a good character writer. The problem is, you got 12 issues now, and now what's going to happen? Like, new perspective. You know, we're getting a Doug issue. Well, here's a, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to tell you straight out what's going to happen, my friend. Tell me. No, throw it at me. Fall of X is going to happen. Krakoa is either going to become completely inhabitable or the X-Men are going to be locked out of heaven and these Fall of X comics that are coming out notice they're all five issues um, it's going to relaunch Uncanny it will probably relaunch X-Force uh, perhaps an X-Men I think regular X Men will now be like the Krakoa X Men will yeah. be the secondary title, and Immortal is going to wind up becoming Uncanny because you did what you had to do with the Immortal. You're doing focus issues on each of them. Mm -hmm. What happens after that? Also, can we talk about the Council and how shitty they are? Like, oh hey, okay. One, I would have gotten rid of Mystique and Destiny a long time ago. I would have gotten rid of Sinister a long time ago. Well, actually, you know what? The way they got Sinister now, I totally get it. Yeah. Also, I would not trust Mother Righteous. Fuck that bitch. Her and, yeah. and Rasputin. Sorry. Sorry, Rasputin. You're, you're, uh, you're, um, you're friendly fire. You're, you're, you're a casualty in this. Sorry. Don't trust you yet. We don't know you. Uh, yeah. Sean keep them storm you need to sit your ass down or go to go to, to uh, Rocco okay you can't do yeah. both take it out of Rocco 
Thank yeah, Craig like, of NASA, but I would. No, okay, okay. I was like, you know what? You know, you know what you should do, Storm? You should do what Magneto did. Your get yourself a proxy here on Earth. There you go. And make it be Danny Moonstar. Screw it. Exactly. Or, Here's another thing. Like, you got like 90% villains now on your council. Facts. And and it's become the Legion of Doom. Also, like, also, let's let's talk about like you do have Danny Moonstar. Why is she not on the council? Why, why, don't why you isn't have... any of the new mutants on the council? Why isn't why isn't Betsy on the council? She has been repping um I mean ones. she is Captain Britain. I mean she should, right? It makes sense. She has a PR with me with media. Why isn't um and uh, why why isn't um more characters from like why isn't there a, you're right a new mutant there needs to be a Gen Xer yeah I mean like one of somebody I'm just saying put my uh, name on it uh yeah yeah. <laughs> Why also, would you put either Monet or Warren? You know, they were in that terrible X Corp book written by once yeah, again. That was, Teeny Howard does not. Yeah. She tried to make business fun and it didn't work. She didn't make anything fun. That was. Yeah. I don't understand how you would have so many characters I am beloved or beloved to me, and make it the most boring freaking comic I've ever read in my life. You put uh, Celine in there, uh, and like. You have oh. Selena Mastermind in there and nothing happened. Okay. I would bring in Scarlet Witch. I would bring in um you know what? Bring in Cable. Screw it. Like he would keep he would be he would he'd be the one to watch everybody else. Well you got Hope on there, so Hope no, is I, no, I get rid of Hope. She she's gone. Like, no, yeah. I no, I hate Hope. I'd be like, Hope, uh, you're you're fired. <laughs> you're all fired. Um, the entire c- quiet council is fired. No, um, well, no, no, no. Xavier, no. I think Xavier just needs somebody to tell him, like, bro. Okay. Moira, don't trust Moira. Okay, she's only she's only all she's ever done is use you. Uh, Mystique. Fuck that bitch, Destiny. Fuck that bitch. Uh, what? Wait. So, so Exodus is fine. Talk, how do you feel? How do you feel about the cartoon villainization of Moira? Um, I feel like it kind of happened out of nowhere because it, because we because you remember during Inferno, she just kind of got mad because things weren't going as fast as she wanted to. And then she just like, oh, they're, and then when when they found and when she found out, uh, they were tracking her just to keep an eye on her. She just blew her mind. Just yeah, like, but then we got the X lives and X deaths of Wolverine by I was your so buddy cool. Percy, the dumbest comic ever. And then they're care. like, let's make her work. into a transformer at the end of this. And they're like, I, no, they made her so bitter. They, they made her. They, she made like be like oh wait I hated mutant kind and then but you get this weird undertone like where people agree with her because she said fuck you Charles like she's the one who started all this he's her pawn no but I uh, it I think it's weird she's just like Oof. it's just weird <laughs> she's become Gargamel yes. She's become a she's become a Disney villain without any of the fun songs. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm choking. It, it's fine, it's fine. But anyway, um, <laughs> I think the fall is just gonna make everything traditional again. I don't think they'll be back in a school, <laughs> but I feel like Krakoa is dead, or it's gonna be. In the I fat, like in the... Krakoa though. It's so there's so I mean, much we potential all do, there. But the problem is, they're so not on the map with the rest of the Marvel universe. Yeah, because it because they point out because they point out the injustice 
that's going on. But I think it's weird. How come Kokoa has to go, but Wakanda can't go? Because Wakanda is basically the same thing. It's essentially the same thing. Isolationist country. Also, <laughs> but the thing is, it's never pushed. Like, Black Panther still shows up on everything. Yeah. That's the thing. Black Panther is in everything. Um, the problem, and the biggest problem is, I I feel like, I feel like, once again, I don't think Hickman got his full story because Hickman never does a year on anything. No. Like, Fantastic Four was like, I think like four or five years, right? Yeah. And then a- Avengers had to be close to like five years that crescendo yeah. in the secret wars it was it was a while it was it it went on for a minute but like something happened and you know what i think it was that son of a bitch jordan white that pig no like i just like i feel like he's the evil villain he is he is the villain i feel like i i feel like i feel like the real evil villain here is disney yeah I feel no, like Disney, yeah, Disney is pushing very much because it also like I, I was so happy that they went back to let's just spoil everything a week before the comic comes out because there was no reason to buy Amazing Spider Man this week because we all know Kamala was gonna die just so she could be resurrected as a mutant because they had to do that in the Marvel MCU and but but also. Uh, now they're pretending like, oh, well, what were you going to do now? Oh, well, they pretend like it was a leak. They don't care yeah. about, they don't care about how we feel. No, they're like, it may, let's pretend it was a leak. Right. Who it's like, no, it? Jordan. Like, was anybody probably, like... It came, it came from your computer, Jordan. Stop yeah, playing with is. us. <laughs> the biggest problem is, the biggest problem is that I talked to my other friend who is deeply into x-men and he's younger a lot younger than me and he is just like i don't want to see what the mcu does to mutants like it's just gonna be terrible like it's uh, gonna like it's gonna be shaky but like you know what i I, i'm i'm giving them the benefit of the doubt Derek, i'm gonna throw this out here to you stuff x-men is the horniest comet that was ever written ever because claremont is a pervert we all know that but x-men are horny they're always fucking each other um and if they're not they're effing other marvel heroes now when you go into the mcu it is a sexless universe my friend True. there is no sexuality and the only time there is any type of sexuality is a Guardians movie because James Gunn has it so far out of the rest of the X of the rest of the universe that he could have Star Lord bang somebody. Now, go and watch any. And the thing is, people hated She Hulk, but She Hulk did everything people wanted Marvel to do. They made fun. She made fun of the. Sh- I mean, was the show great? No, it no. wasn't. It was. I enjoyed it. But I have a bias because I've always been in love with She Hulk. My sister and yeah, I. Yeah, she's dope. Like yeah. I, she's always been like an X Men cousin. Like she's cool. Yeah. She's she, always she been like X Men yeah. cookout. She is an X Men. She is because every time something happens, she's like, "I'm about to represent the mutants." Like right. in fact, in the new She Hulk comic, um, Nightcrawler did come to her and be like, "Hey, oh yeah, that was cool. I really like yeah. that." But also, if you go back to Extinction Agenda, um, no, Executioner Song, no, no, Extinction Agenda, yeah, I forgot. Um, the first issue of them when they're on Genosha, it's like talking heads, and Jennifer Walters is like, that's right, I think the X-Men did nothing wrong, but they deserve a fair trial, so import them back, and uh, I'll get them, the, I'll get a work visa and go and defend them. Um and so, she's always been about it. I I love that about her. She's always been about it. But um, yeah, she Hulk fucked. She fucked a lot. I, hey, I like, she fought, she fought, like she's she's that's family. Like yeah. I and I really like her book too. I really like the art. The art. The, new, the new that new Rainbow Rowell um She Hulk comic is the bomb. It's really um, so, it's really so it's so pretty. 
and every time I read it, I'm like, it's gonna get canceled, right? Yeah. Like every time a new issue comes out, I'm so excited when yeah. I see it in like my when my my subscription kicks in. I was like, it didn't oh, it's get a, oh, still here. But like it's Yay. still going. <laughs> That was just like the hopeless, um, the hopeless Spider Woman series, which was one of the greatest, um, and that was like, and he had um Javier Rodriguez on the art, yeah, and he did some amazing art on that comic. Marvel but, doesn't um, do bad with artists though; they no. really, it's just the writers are just. That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you have that, and I like, especially in the movies, man. These these characters don't have sex in the movies at all. It is so PG to the point of. Like, I mean, I mean, they mentioned. I mean, no, yeah, that yeah, that Morgan Stark just came out of nowhere. Yeah, Morgan He's Stark. Back. First of all, she came out of Gwyneth Paltrow, so you know it was like a robot. Second of all, um, <laughs> who cares? Like, who cares anymore? And the biggest problem I have is, and I was talking to one of my friends too is like the last couple of marvel movies have been so craptacular that like i'm really starting to not want to see superhero movies anymore <laughs> and it's i mean I, but just wait though when the x-men get here it's about to change everything when the x-men get here i'm gonna be 70 years old i'm about to retire um <laughs> oh, come on man like yeah. No, it's man, I've been like my entire years. life for this, man. I know. But, like, um, on, we thought we, hey, hey, we had it back in 2000 when the first movie came out. We never thought we'd see it. Yeah. And we got it. And then we got some, we got an amazing no, awesome. sequel. Yeah. And then we got X Men 3. And it was one of the last stand, which was what made me want to kill myself. Hey, um, hey there was good, there was part, there was good parts in it. I mean, the danger room part was really good. The yeah. juggernaut and the juggernaut and Wolverine fight in the house was cool. He just threw him out through the house. And he just anytime Wolverine's in any kind of pain, yeah, it I makes love me it. laugh because you but, know um, <laughs> you're like, you know what, yeah, bitch? But you know what? Those X Men movies got the horny factor right. They all were trying to bang each other. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. Ugh. Storm, it was trying to bang Nightcrawler. You know what? I'm pretty sure Storm banged at least three of her cl uh, classmates of that generation. Yeah. Wolverine. Magneto. Oh, no, Magneto does a gap. He does a gap. Night Wolverine, Nightcrawler, and I'm going to say Sunfire. Yeah. I'm going to say this. It happened really early on. It happened like probably the day the night of when they got back from Krakoa. It had to because then he left. So <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like it, yeah. it it was it was really fast. But like um that so um or Banshee. No, nah, I think Banshee 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 is too is too teetotaler for her. I um, hate Moira for so long. No 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 he's no he's bad. No like he's a he's a bad man. If 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 Scott and Emma were completely over, Banshee and Emma need to get back to banging. Yeah, and thank and... you. People forget that. Like he turned her, he curved her. He yes. curved her all the time. He was like, like, come. She was like, oh, take it. She's like, oh, come on. We have work to do. Yeah, he'd be like, shut up, Emma. We got stuff to do. Like the kids are missing. Yeah. And, <laughs> um... But um. It's like, oh, can you help me with this? Like, Emma, seriously, can we be can we be can we be focused, please? I, I I'll never forget when like the first couple of times where like she's just like walking around naked in his dreams, and you're he's like, Emma, what are you doing? She's like, Well, I am a psychic, and this is how I sleep. Like, <laughs> and, and then when, and then when he came up, and then when he went to her door, she opened it, and she was like, Listen, it has nothing to do with me, okay? Da 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 da. And then she just threw, it's like, you know what? Here's something to think about. And just threw her sheet at him. And then yeah, she's like, slamming the door on him. Look at, she's like, like, look at these tits. And like, he's look like, look at Dr. Stanberg, okay? Yeah. $100,000 $100, a piece. Yeah. So, um, 
Yeah. Yeah, but oh, okay, but uh, all right, I gotta wrap this up. Yeah, Thank I know, you. I got it too because I'm like, we've been talking for almost two hours, and yeah, I'm good. All right, man. Yeah, this is fun. But, this is fun. We've been doing like we've been we've been talking on Instagram for months, and it's like it's really nice to get a face of day. Like, yeah, it's, it's hard fun. to like to like because you know I do my own I do a podcast, and that is one of those things because of work. It's yeah. tough, like especially like overtime lately. But it's just been like it's crazy. Even to get mine out weekly, it's it's like jumping through hoops. Yeah, it's so, it's a real short. But I would definitely, if you ever want to do this again, I'm down. It's just we have to plan it out a month before. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We could do this. Like I'm I'm good with this. Okay. All right. Well, Gary thank Z. you for having me on. Oh yeah, Gary Z. I'm 1407 Gray Malkin Lane. We'll see you soon. Gaspacho Jones. Yeah. <laughs>